recording, sorry. So process management, um, what I what I see for that was the Linux Academy had um, <clears throat> had something for that. Um, and I go back and forth in between. Let me look and see where that's at. Taz, you finished everything in the Linux Academy, right? Not everything, but close to enough. I mean, not everything. See, they don't even have process management. Let me look. Yeah, they well, they, they have pro, they talk about PS um in there and how to kill processes. And okay, that. right here, um, operating system boot and so forth. So on part one, part two, twelve minutes, ten minutes, nine, twelve, uh, maybe that may be okay. I'll look at it. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at it tonight. I've already been through this section here. Um, updates, yum updates. Oh, that's what I meant to ask you, Taz. On the on the um, Linux Academy, did they have you install the virtualization package? Um, K, not you mean KVM? Yeah. Uh, there is. Yeah, they talk about that. In, wait a minute. But do no, you, no, but no, do you, no. That's only in the book. That's in the book. Um, and so they didn't. So they on on their yeah. stuff. They don't have you install it and then build out a VM. I mean, build out. Uh, uh, not that. No, no. Unless I'm. I mean, again, I still have a little bit to the bottom. Unless there's something at the bottom, I'm, I didn't see. Okay. or pay attention to. But um, I have that last section uh, to do. So um, I don't. I don't. I didn't see anything in there. Not from the top down to you know at least. A quarter of a way, and there's nothing about doing KVM. Okay. So, not that I'm, yes, I know. In the book, yeah, they talk about it, but. Yeah. <clears throat> and I and I told everyone to skip the first chapter about KVM. You can look at the Kickstart stuff because that's easy to do. We can actually set that up um, and go from there. Um, mounting file systems, I'm going to leave that with the Linux Academy. Um, in terms of adding partitions, <clears throat> but we are going to do NFS stuff. But mounting, uh, swap space, I'm going to leave that with them until I get okay. to it and I change my mind and I'll just throw it in there. And recovering, uh, the root password and all of that, that's going to be interrupting. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. going to be back at Linux Academy only because <clears throat> two things I'm torn with. I'm torn with setting up servers out on somebody's data center and then yeah. you guys getting access to it and then, you know, going to do your install and so forth and so on. Well, one, it costs. And two, it's it's one of those things like, could would you do better by doing this on your own box at home and you save yourself some money? But I, yeah. I, I I don't know. I'm torn. I I have my my qualms. Well, I'm, I'm I'm still. Linux Academy does a good job though. I mean, they, right. they explain it pretty easily. And then you got the you got the lab, certain you know, there the server. So right, and then no no biggie. Yeah, so I I think you know I I want to supplement with what we would what we needed. I haven't gone through the Linux Academy yet, but let me go well, through okay. everything in the Linux Academy. That's one of my goals. I'll be, I'm going to my see my mom this weekend, so I most definitely won't probably be doing it Saturday and Sunday. I may do it on the drive back. I'll let you know. No class on Saturday, right? No, we have class on Saturday. Just because okay. I go out of town doesn't mean I'm <laughs> If I go to a conference, I have a class. My mama got internet. I made sure of that. Yeah, like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if I have to go to Starbucks and sit in Starbucks, and you, you <laughs> I, and I sit in my car. Like we gonna have class. Like, what you talking about? That's not an option. Okay. Um, <laughs> that, that is not what I do. When I go in, um, I what it says join. What do I do? Would you, no, you should have an account. I sent you an email. No. Yeah, when you sent me that link, it takes me to. No, 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 uh, no, no. You just got an invite. I got an invite, and when I clicked on the link, mm -hmm. it it came up with the page, and um, 
it says enter user ID or join. Oh, uh, I guess you gotta join. But okay, I, I, I don't I don't remember that. But I mean I'm looking at it from I already had a username and login. So I think you do have to create one on their on their side. Okay. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So you just okay. And you click join to do that, right? You're talking to the wrong person. I was the team manager. So <laughs> a little different for me. A little different. But I think so. Give it a shot. I mean, you shouldn't be paying yeah, anything. Because um, I was going to do the PayPal, but it was asking me, um, click here to accept the invite, create your support, and mm. I get invalid token. Oh, I sent you another one, I think. Hold on. Let's go back. Okay. Why are you scrolling? You're giving me a headache. I mean, like, you make me dizzy. <laughs> You're going to be all right. You're just <laughs> uh, you going to take this like a chance. Take the phone. Sorry, you just... Scrolling and scrolling. Take this on the chin, son. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Invites. Yeah, see, I sent you... You hadn't accepted that invite. I sent oh. Second okay. time, third time. <laughs> at Gmail. Wait, let me see. Okay, let me click on this one. I get invalid token on both, so I must... Uh... Okay, hold on. Let's do this. Let me do this. Okay, I have one pending. That's correct. Is it this? Is that it? Oh. Is this your? Is this your email? Yep. Yep. Okay. No. Yeah. So, second time. Take away the um, a and d. It's second time. And third time. Yes. Like that. Nope, second time, third time. Okay. All right. Uh oh, hold on. Don't click on that. I forget to change you right here. Okay, try that. Okay. That work? Uh, clicking on it right now. Yes. Okay. Okay. I got it. All right. So, <clears throat> oh yeah. So yeah. Let's get Taz even dizzier. Back oh. to what I was doing. Name resolution. I can add this little stuff here. No biggie. NTP, I did that. Logging, I did that. Journal, I did that. I didn't do LVM. They can do that. Jobs, I can do that. But Or they can do that. NFS, we're going to do that. That's going to be fun. Uh, lim limiting network communication. Let's go in here and see what they're talking about. Oh, back to firewall D here. Yeah, they're going over firewall D. They're giving you guys the gooey. Ooh. Ooh. Cheating asses. Cheat when you're using the gooey. I know Taz is all about the gooey now. Like, why? Well, just do it in the gooey. Servers are what? not. Me? Servers are not meant to have. I don't like the gooey. Servers are not meant to have gooies. Yeah, no, I don't agree. Yeah, what are you talking about? Not me. Oh, see, they mask IP tables. See? Well, like I said, the default is firewall, but you can actually, you can enable IP tables. Yeah, but they mask it, so that's, I'll yeah, add that. You can use it if you're, like, into it, I guess. Yeah, I'll add that. And then at the end of the day, this is when they do the virtualization and the kickstart. So that's why I was like, we'll yeah. just we'll just stick that on the end. 
That's what I came up with. And then they break down what a kickstart is. And then how to deploy your kickstart. And, it, and see, they're just doing probably HTTP. And then go from there because it doesn't look like they have, excuse me, it doesn't look like they have, um, it doesn't look like they have DHCP running on here. It just looks like they just do a HTTP kickstart or something like that and call it good. Hey, hey, can I interject real quick? Yeah. I just got that Node.js scholarship. Oh, you did? Yeah, I just got the did I, Sorry, did I, I didn't apply? Mean, I don't think I applied. Yeah, I just got it all here. So I'm going December, November 29th and 2nd. I didn't apply. JW Marriott as well. Be staying. Where? Uh, in uh, in Austin. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Well, I mean, you, you it's because of you. I don't think, <laughs> I, don't think I, out there. I don't think I applied. Let me go check my email. Okay. You apply for everything. I'm surprised. Yeah, see, I didn't apply. <laughs> Sorry, Lolita. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 no. You're fine. Yeah, I didn't apply. All right, so let's go over the book and what I'm thinking. In, you had a book? In, <laughs> in conjunction with the Linux Academy. So if you guys click on your Linux Academy on your learning path. You want us to actually go to it? Okay. Yeah, I want you to actually do some work. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, I want you to move your buns. I got it on my phone. <laughs> so I'm not getting off the couch. Hold on. Let's see. All right, I'm logged in. Okay, so yeah, I know this stuff. You can put this on your phone, right, and your mobile devices. I'm just curious. So. I I can't have my mobile device in my at my job, so it doesn't really make a difference. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I just read online or whatever. All right, so the first chap, the first two chapters. I don't know where you guys are at in these chapters, but. You should be in chapter two, and I hopefully you guys will be done with this by Tuesday, Wednesday, because Thursday is a whole. Not, I'm actually assigning the next set of chapters, um, but I tell you what I'm going to assign. Um, I am going to follow along with these folks. So in Linux Academy. Most definitely understand and use essential tools. Just do all of that. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, those are just really commands. Um, that's what that is. And I'll make my, when I do my, my, um, when I do my, my, my lab setup, I am going mm -hmm. to do my lab setup according to, this so it probably won't line up with what the book has so we'll probably be jumping around when you look at it hey Tunde. hey Tunde. so Hi. i don't think he is he he don't have oh. a microphone yet oh he might not have a microphone yeah he's, he's writing in the chat here okay so, yeah, file creation, I'm looking in the book, file creation, info on the manuals, uh, mm -hmm. host names, network cards, uh, they, they get right into the network part of it, so I'll make sure I, I oh. line, line that up. So, with that being said, let me look in the front of the book, let me see if that comes up again. Um, no, it doesn't. So that's where they got you at there. Uh, they, they immediately start you there. And then chapter three is like everything you need to know for that. Uh, chapter four. So the first three chapters are, are what we're rolling with. And the um, 
understand essential use, understand and use essential tools. We're rolling with that, so you combine that together, okay? And then from the book, uh, let me get to chapter four. They hit, they hit firewalls and SSH keys. Uh, they go over IP tables. I would and to group access list the one in the and then they hit SE Linux. So for chapter four, um, we would we can do that next. Let me look here. Let me go back uh, to this. Yeah, see, they, they kind of line it up. It's, you see how it's lining up? Chapter 4 is is lining up with the with this, and then they go in the boot process. They stay in SE Linux, and they go in the boot process. So, yeah, we're not going to do that. So, Chapter 4, we can continue with Chapter 4. And then in here, SE Linux is down here at the bottom. Manage security. That will be the next section for us. So uh, let's write that out. So from the book, uh, chapters one through three. Uh, we should say just one through four is what we're doing first for these first two weeks these are first two weeks from Linux Academy uh, we will be doing uh, what is it called manage useful essentials tools understand And use essential tools. And then after that, we do, I think it's called manage security. Yeah. And then manage security. And I, I'll clean all this up. Okay, so that's that. So that's our first two weeks. It's I think I think all of this is gonna be review. I don't know where has anybody read other than Taz? How much chapter two? You want know, chapter two? We, all right. So yeah, you can skip the kickstart stuff. We're gonna go back to that. Um, the boot process. Let me go back over here. What do you have next? Users and groups. Let's see, chapter five. Chapter six is file systems. So, skip kickstart. Yeah, yeah. And then package management. Where's the users and groups at? Oh, that's back here, user administration. That's chapter eight. And then they got log files. Did you read chapter 10, Taz? Chapter 10? No, yeah. I, I didn't go past 9. Oh, because it has firewall in there. That's why. See, that's why they tell you that it's uh, up to 9. So, I mean, I'll read 10. Well, I would read 10 because it just... It just talks about firewall D and adding it permanent to a particular zone... Uh, yeah, I can, I'll read it. I would skip the stuff about masquerading and IP forwarding. Um, okay. Rappers. I would just concentrate on the firewall D stuff in there. Ping, e-links, and nmap. I would concentrate on. All right. So we're going to go through chapters one through four as they are in order from the book. And then with the, and then we, and we could just keep everything the same. From there, the only difference, uh huh.
Um, so we're going through the book. Are we doing the exercises in the book too? Or I would do what? I would do I would if I mean me personally, I would do the ones in Linux Academy. Okay. Um we can do the ones in the book as a as extra bonus if we have time. I mean, do what you can. I'm not going to tell you not to do them. I would say do what you can. Practice, but, practice, practice. Yeah, it's just more practice. Uh, but the the I got the Linux, Linux Academy for a reason so that you wouldn't have to spend time with, oh, is my lab set up right or is it not set up right? Okay, because that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, so you don't spend time like you. I mean, it's good to troubleshoot. Don't get me wrong, but you, so you don't spend time, all your time, doing all of that. That's that's why I was looking at. Um, so uh, let's start. Um, with uh, did anybody get all the commands that I had, all the stuff I had put in the um Slack this yeah. week? Yeah, yeah, I wrote them down. Yeah, those are good commands. So, me and you guys just started. Let me get myself set up. I'm on my box here. And let's get open. Oh, come on. I'm going to do another box. Yeah, I still couldn't get to mine. I'll go to the cloud and use that one. Did you figure out how to get in? No, I figured I must have set something on the firewall or did not set something in the firewall. I can't get it. I changed my port. So. Uh, let's see. I have to reset your password. Access. All right, while well, it's doing this thing, what I want to do is let's do okay, chapter two. Let's um, run through the little two minute drill, uh, the self test, and the two minute drill. And then we will uh, run through these commands. We will pick up with the commands on page 95. Where it's like figure out how to SSH to a machine, how to SCP stuff over Telnet, an email client, LFTP, and boom. So chapter two, and then we'll run into chapter three. We're doing some fundamental commands. I'm going to ask you guys questions because I think some of this you just should know because we've been playing with it. And if you don't know, here's your chance to ask questions and write it down and we'll go from there. So let's get cracking. Yeah, they'd go over network cards and so forth, so we can do all of this. All right, let me get my highlighter. Hold on, let me find a highlighter right quick. It's usually one up here on this desk, but it's not. Put that there, hold on. Uh, one more thing, hold on.
That should be about all you need. Okay, so let's get cracking. All right, chapter two. Um, in chapter two, they discuss uh, about your kickstarts and packages and how your kickstarts should set, be set up and partition. Chapter one talks about uh, the KVM and so forth and so on. In the RHCE, you don't even do this part. You don't set up KVM like so. This is the only time you need it. Um, and I, I'm, I'm assuming when you walk in, your machines are already going to be installed, and KVM is going to already be installed. Or you may have to install the package, and then you just build your VMs from there. I'm not sure how that test is set up. I, I'm, I need to reach out to somebody and find out for sure. Um, uh, I'm sure Taz, have you reached out to find out yet? Repeat that. Have I reached out to find out what about the K about KVM? Like, is it something it, we gotta, that that we got to install, or it's already installed? They just want us to build. Well, KVM. that's the toss up. I mean, honestly, um, they I, they suggest that you should at least know how to do it mm. because you may have to be required to, you know, log, obviously log, we, when we got. But log into a virtual uh, machine, but um, they suggest we should at least know it. Um, I don't think it's going to be on the exam, to be honest. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll yeah, see. It's I kind mean, of a toss up. I mean, because I mean, this is why I say this. Uh, looking through here, uh, there's no KVM in this, and this is directly what? from, from why Red is it in the book. Though? It's in the book because it making it's making the assumption that you don't have a lab. It's making the assumption that you don't have okay. a place to put uh, your VM. So it says, "Hey, you have a 64-bit machine that can do virtualization. Hey, put Red Hat on there, and then put KVM on top of that, and then you'll have two VMs that you can play with for your lab." That's okay. that's where I get that from, but in here they don't they don't even they don't even talk about KVM like it's not even in here, so that's why I was wondering. I think this is just how they got how they got you set up for the book. Like you could take the book home, you don't have access yeah. to nothing. Here's what you need. Here's what you could do to get yourself access. And I think they give you VMs in the back in the book, right in the in the CD. They give yeah. you they give you a server VM to set up to go to to play with. I haven't played with it yet, so I, I couldn't tell you if once I once I once I pull it up, I'll just grab the kickstart of it and I'll just build that based on that. Go from there. All right. So now let's look at the next thing. We're doing page ninety five. Uh, it says configure your SSH client. Let's um let's look at the SSH config file. Um do 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 Oh, did somebody have a question? Okay, you went over them. Okay. All right, so let's do this. Oh, Lolita, let me get you your droplet. Sorry. Hold on, people. Let me get this. What I want you guys to do is open up that file, uh, sshd config. Um, it's under etc ssh sshd underscore config. Vim that file. Is 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 what I'm assigning you is going to be important. Uh, when you when you do when you do the homework, let me mm. let me give you this, Lolita. Um, go back to my email. So in that file, you should see um, port and permit root login. Uh, 
Let me grab this too, Lolita. And close this. I'll close that. Let's go here. Um, I can't see anything. Are you showing something? No. Oh, okay. I'm not. Okay, I'm not as of yet. Give me, give me a few. Let me, let me get Lolita set up so she can go along. Yeah. No, it's not like nothing like being in the class and you can't follow along. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I gotta go back and watch the videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's nice. Let's see. You remember what you changed your port to? No, you don't. Okay, let's go console access. This is the fun part. Is, is your screen dead? I think you're dead. I just rebooted. So, let, we're going to... I may just create your new droplet here. You know, you you and Taz are killers of the of the of the little virtuals. <laughs> I, I do nothing. I do nothing except attempt to log in. <laughs> Y'all are the killer of the virtuals. Oh, oh there it is. Like, I'm like, why can I get on your virtual? Ch child. I was trying to do the homework you gave. Right, hold on. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. This this thing times out on me. Every time. Hold on. Here we go. Okay, all right. Come on back. There we go. All right. I always mess it up. 72B, 0B. Four nine A one A six four C F five four. Okay, here we go again. Seven two zero B four nine A one A six four C four five four. All right. All right, let's look at Lolita's SSH. Um, let's go port. Let's expand. That's why you missed a two. I thought I did. I'm trying. All right, let's go back over here. Oh, yeah. Boy, Lolita, if you don't get these questions, I'm about to ask you on SSH, right? All right, so. Okay. Is your firewall disabled? Still not getting that. 107, 170, 242, 71. Yes. Oh, maybe I can't go as root. Hold on. Yeah, nothing. It failed? No. Marked inaccessible. DF minus H. DF minus H. You're not out of space. If not, I'm going to spin you up another instance. Permission deny error binding to port. Fatal can't bind to the address. Okay, well, let's do this, Lolita. Let's do this for you. Let's stick you on. Um, five, five, five. 
it may be something running on that, but it should have errored out. And let's go Ooh. here. There we go. All right, you should be able to get in. And let me check to see if can you get in by root. I changed your root password, by the way. I need to give it to you. I'll email it to you. Okay. No, uh, so yeah, you can go in as root. I am going to email that to you now. In fact, I'm not going to email that to you. I am just going to message it to you in the chat. I need to do all of that. There you go. Try that. And I can tell if you're on... Give it a shot on port five five five. You can go. You can log in as root. Okay, and it's port. It's five five. Yeah. Tune did you get all of this? Are you caught up with what we're doing? Are you logged into a machine? Okay, it's asking me for password. Okay. Um, it's in chat? Yeah. Okay. I don't see you have connected. You said it to all, but yes. You can change that, though. Did it let you in? There you go. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. So if you type password, you can change your password. That's not what I want to do. I don't need to be there. I need to be here. All right. So we just went over SSH just now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're like, I was just so focused on that. <laughs> we, we just went over SSH. Uh, let's see. I don't know where my little terminal went, but okay. I'll open up another one. Uh, da -da -da. Let's see, you are this. Come on. All right, so I'm going to ask some random questions. What file would I look in to see what user logged in uh, to my uh, server? What log file? Via SSH. Messages? Uh, var log secure, actually. Oh. So let's go with the var log. That's VM secure. As you can see, it shows me logging in. What did you just do? What? Hmm? Okay. That was like, that went by super fast. I don't know what you just did. Uh, I did a Vim on oh. var log secure. Okay. And I just jet it down to the end of my file to see whether or not I got failed attempt or accepted or so forth. If you looked in messages, you would see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so var log messages is I mean var log secure is what you want. So let's open up this file vim etc ssh and sshd config. As you know, we can change the port. 
uh, we changed the port to 555. I think there's some servers running on 222 now. I think that's why that's having problems. Um, um, yeah, show you right. So the one in blue is at the at a data center, an actual machine in a data center, bare metal machine. The one on the right is my uh, digital ocean one. Um, so in the book, they talk about um, the configuration files. They talk about the four directors, the host. So you could you could specify in here what host that is allowed right now the star means any host can connect so let's you if you do a slash and you search for a host just like you see it you and then hit end for next oh they only had they only have one so i guess you have to specify it i guess you have to specify what you have to put that in the in the file so in on page 95 they say four directors are included in the default first host directive applies to the other directors the other directors to all connections that's what the star is for and then you have uh G gss api uh you can set that to yes and then they're talking about uh that's with your Kerbos. That's when you set up like your, like if I set up an IPA, that IPA server that I set up, that's what that is. And then um, you, well, yeah, you only CD over the var log. That's a directory, secure as a file. Um, the the GASS GSS API that's probably not going to be covered much on the test. I think the default configuration files that set up will just work for you uh, for logging in. And then for X11 uh, to yes. So I'm going to do that to show you some stuff. Um, let's uh, exit this. And, uh, well, let's go back. I want to show you this. So, let me vim my SSH, SSHD config. And let's look at, let's look at, uh, Ford. Um, yeah, X11 forwarding, yes. So, that's the one I want. And forwarding X11 trust. Uh, let me look up trust. No, that's not in here. I wonder if these are these are old configuration files, but that's okay. All right. So with this being said, what this tells me is let me do install Firefox. Uh, make sure I have Firefox on here. It does, and then I'm gonna exit. All right, so here, if I do a dash capital X and I log in, I should be able to type Firefox at my display. Oh, hold on, let me uh, do this because I don't, I don't know what is connected on over there. So let me do this. Now I do Firefox dash X. No display. Okay, that's fine. I so said let's do yum group list. I need to install. Oh yeah, I've sh my known desktop is installed. Let me see. Uh, yum group install. I'll come back. And this is the problem I have with this yum. Let me see something. Uh, graphical target. Let's see. Let's go up to init five. 
and see if it errors out on me. I may have to log into something else. I want to show you guys this. Kill you. Mm. We're going to have to set it to graphical target. Um, system control. Uh, is it uh, enable graphical dot target? Okay, let's find out what the graphical target is. This is what you're probably going to have to, you may not have to do this on a test. I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, RECSA. These are the different targets, like multi-level. Um, yeah, it used to be like run level and then init five, but now it's graphical target and multi-target. And I'm maybe thinking about multi-target. So multi-target. Multi uh, I want the graphical. Oh, I, want, yeah, I, I want graphical targets. It's rescue and power off as well, right? Yeah. So let's get, see, system control, get default. Uh, let's go there. <clears throat> get default. And see, it's set to graphical. So it should have rendered. But either way it go. Uh, what was supposed to happen was, because we are we already in graphical mode according to this. I should be able to do uh, Firefox uh, dash star. Let me see if it will work over here. And not star ampersand. Oh snap. I need to pass the dash X for it to render. And this is probably not going to work because I don't think I have a GUI on this. This is probably not going to work. Yeah. Command not found. sudo yum install Firefox. So when you are logging into a box and you want to redirect the display back to you, you pass the dash X option and it re renders a display back to you. But what you have to have is you have to have your, your graphical interface has to be up. And when I say your graphical interface, I mean your GUI interface. So let's see something here. I um, ran a VNC server there. It's called VNC client viewer. Um, we want to go to want to do this. Yes, want this, which is this. Want this here. We're gonna go back to VNC viewer. Continue. Okay, that's fine. I don't remember the password. What is on one? Yeah. So I just changed the password there. Are you not liking me? Oh, 
Okay, that's fine. Let's do this. Where's my screen? There we go. You don't like me? Okay, just quit there. Oh, now you just timed out on me. That's awesome. All kind of problems, huh? Yeah, no display. Knew that one wasn't going to work. But what should have happened was... You guys should have gotten a display back. But I know there's a graphical display on this machine. Because I put it on there. Alright, let's try this. And then if this don't work, I'm moving on. He spent enough time on here. And this is another way to get to a box if you need a graphical display, by the way. I don't know what that is. I have to fix that. I don't know why that password doesn't work for me. But I'll fix that. But basically, I should have been able to render back my uh, display of my box. Um, yeah, see, two, let's kill, colon one, and kill colon three. And VNC password. Watch when I get off the phone with you guys. It's going to work. I guarantee it. Which one did I just start? Oh, I didn't start anything. And in this v, this in this file, this uh, VNC the X11 forward. If that's not turned on, then you can't forward stuff from your remote terminal back to your display. And you have to have firewall configuration set up for it too, as well too. So this way, what I'm doing, I'm just trying to show you a way. Like if say you were in a lab, like you we install KVM on something. This is how you will render a display back. So now you have your display here. I'm on my desktop in a digital ocean. Uh, and then if I come here, I can open up a terminal. And so here, let's move this over. Uh, so you can see. Um, to prove to you that I'm on the same machine. Well, not that one. Secure. All right. So here I can do echo um, hello to the log file of var, well, pinned to the var log secure. And as you can see, I put hello. You guys see that? So I'm on the box and I render back. So that's what the X11 forwarding gets you. And then <clears throat> on the command line, it says they show you how to SSH to the actual machine. You know how to do that, right? Everybody knows how to SSH to a machine. All of you that don't know how to SSH to, I need to show you that. Okay, I'm going to say you know how to SSH. So, how do we find out what flags or what these flags mean? Like, they have this SSH minus L. What is that? How do I find out what that flag means? Tune, tune day, how do I find out? Okay, man on SSH. What's another way I can find out, Lolita? Um, is it P info? 
that's one way. Let's go. Let's try that here. I mean, control C. So gives me, and then two, not two, but Taz. What's another way to find out? Uh, you can help. There you go. So those are the three ways that you can find out. So let's go with the let's 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 write that down. Uh, what three ways can we find out what the flags are for a command? Uh, so let's call this finding. Uh, what the parameters mean or, or flags mean, and there are three ways. Those three ways were help. The next one was a man, and the other one is p info. And if you run p info from command line and it does not show up, it's a package called p info. So the dash l in this book. There's a big L, little L. That means you're speci specifying the, the host name, or not the host name, but the the username you want to go log in as. Versus, we just do SSH uh, some user at whatever. You don't have to do that. You can do SSH-L some user, and then give the IP address in this format. That's how you can SSH. See, it's trying to, but that's how, that's what that means. And then um, they talk about you accept your keys uh, to, once you get there, is you, you accept the keys. And then they talk about SCP. Now, SCP and S, SFTP. So we had this discussion this weekend, Slack, what the difference between SCP and SFTP were. They both use SSH. They both are secure. The main difference is SFTP lets you log on to a box and run commands and make directories versus SCP doesn't. So let's SCP. Um, uh, And then, you know, that might work. Yeah. That knew that one going to work. So, let's Vim. Uh, let's do P info on SCP. Because you have to put the port in, I think, a bracket. Uh, dash capital P. No such file or directory. Let's go back. So, do do do, yeah. What are we missing? And you know, when it, you know you can make your own man pages. So in the future, when you guys make man pages, can you put examples in your man page? That'll be so helpful. All right. So, Taz, what's wrong with my command? I need to... Uh, what command? Let's see. Do I need to put it here? What do you don't like about my command? Oh, I guess I need to give it a file, huh? Let's see what's in my temp folder. Uh, okay, let's grab that. That's what's wrong with my command. So what I did was use the up arrow. I said, I want you to connect to my box um, and go to this directory. 
and grab that password.txt file that you see over here and then throw that in temp on my current box so if I go to my current box I should have password.txt file there that's using SCP SFTP is different so let's do SFTP dash dash help so, so one quick question uh -huh. for SCP mm -hmm. um, it's only you got to put a file name because that's all it's going to let you do either get a file or put one right right okay right versus SFTP lets you connect to the box and get and let you peruse or browse the box and that's what I'm going to demonstrate now. So SFTP, um, I wonder, yeah, I got to do dash P, capital P. And notice that on SSH, it's lowercase p. Um, You see that? I didn't have to put no file or anything of that nature. Now I'm on the box. If I want to find out what my current directory is, I'm in my home directory of that box. But I can CD over the temp of that box and do a an ls, and you'll see I have password.txt. What I can also do is I can tell you where I'm at on my local box. So I can do a LPWD and it says your local working directory is temp. I can change my local working directory to CD to slash opt. And then when I do a LPWD, my working directory is opt. And so I can do a LLS and it's telling me what's in my opt directory of my local box, like the box that I came from. So that's the difference between SCP and SFTP. SFTP lets me go and move around the box or move freely as I will. SCP is like, go get what you need and come on back. And then they talk about, you see the dash X in there? They, they, they're rendering back the, 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 the thing, let's see. Um, let's go here. Uh, maybe it may work. Let me think. And I don't know. It's going to be a double hop. It might, it might work, but I doubt it. Uh... <laughs> really? Why my connection refuse? Oh, yeah. That's because it's this. Okay. And it doesn't have anything to display, so this is not going to work. Yeah, there's nothing to display back. I don't have it. I don't have my GUI installed. But if I was coming from my other box to the digital ocean box, I could render back this display. That's what I was working on is rendering back a display. But you can see the display through VNC. And then how do we check what ports are running on the box? Next you can do a next step. What else can I do? Yeah, that, that, that's the, the show the the ports. Yeah, but what else can I do on the 
on the box itself. Has anybody ever tried? Uh, let's see. Hold on. Did somebody say yeah. something? Hold on. Let me get my cur cursor over here. Come on, cursor. I'm on a dual screen, so it always acts up. There we go. Yeah, that's one way. But what's the what's a, what's another way? Anybody ever try to do an M map on localhost? Ah, I don't have it installed. You can do an M map on localhost. You can do a netstat dash PANT. You'll see like my VNC stuff. As you can see up here, here's my VNC stuff. You see my SMTP. Uh, you see my unknown port, which is my SSH port. Same thing. You can do an you can do an M map on localhost. How can I tell if what what another box has running on it? From my from my current box. If I want to go, if I want to go, if I want if I want to know, show you right. Uh, if I want to go from show you right, go look at another box. What would I do? One IP address up. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Oh, four, yeah, four ports, yeah. But if I want to go, if I want to look at another box, remember before I could just do an in map on, on say, on this lab. And it's going to go out and scan that box for me. Um, you can also, you see, I can also go out and say, um, I could do a man. Let's do let's do uh, in map dash dash help. Look at the bottom here. Examples. That's what I like to see. <laughs> uh, let's do in map dash v dash a, and you can see they're they're scanning on they're scanning networks with one ninety two right here. They're scanning entire networks. But we want to do that. Let's look up here. Uh, let's find the one that's going to give us the OS name. Dash O. Let's do that. And then let's do... And this takes a while. From what I remember. going through verbosely, verbose, verbosely and scanning and you can see you can scan my box too if you guys need a box to scan you can scan my box or you can scan uh, somebody else's box but my box is fine and it's initiating and it's going to doing its thing whenever you're uh, running something on a machine and you're trying to figure out whether or not um see it's detecting the OS. See and then it's doing a trace route. It's going to give me all the information. Um when you See, it's OS. It didn't tell. It didn't tell me whether or not it was Linux or anything. It didn't. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, it is right here. I also found some Netgear, a Western Digital TV monitor, whatever that is. But it gave me back a fingerprint. It gave me back my SSL cert. There's a way you can lock all of this down so it don't give you all of this. You can lock all of this down. From uh from from my in map, but what I wanted to show you here in, in blue was suppose you had a service running 
or you wasn't sure if it was running or not. So let's tell net to I can tell net to localhost on port eighty. Up, oh, I don't have telnet installed. Lolita, how do I get telnet installed? Yum. What's, what's the command? Yum. Mm-hmm. Space install. Mm-hmm. Telnet. Okay. Good job. And we just went over in map on page 100. But here's here's a, here's another question you guys should know. What port does Telnet run on? Yep, port, port twenty one. Twenty two is SSH. Yeah, twenty one. Yeah, that's right. Twenty one. All right. So, uh, wait. Telnet runs on twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty one. And SSH runs on port twenty two. Okay. What port does what port does just HTTPD run on? Eighty. Eighty. HTTPS runs on four four three. You said HTTPD, right? That's eighty. Right. I'm looking at tune that oh. what you said. Oh. Okay. I was paying attention. All right. Um. I got. Go ahead. You got what? Tell me run doesn't run on twenty three. Mm. It does. Twenty one is FTP. You're right. FTP. Well, I take that back. FTP runs on two ports. Twenty. That was twenty one and twenty two. Oh, twenty one. It's twenty and twenty one. I'm gonna tell you why. Okay. One of the ports is a data port, and the other port is a connection port. So my, I apologize for that. FTP runs on twenty and twenty-one. That's a that's a that's a, a that'll be a trick question on that Security Plus exam. <laughs> and mm -hmm. <laughs> Telnet runs on twenty-three. And we can te test that out by doing a system control start Telnet. You know what? It may not be in system control. You know why? In here, it's under X and it D. Oh, come on, really? Oh, Nick. Oh, you're killing me. Anyway, let's go over here. Let me show you this. On the Linux box. Don't have it. Let me do this. X and it D. X and it D takes care of ten, Telnet and CVS. So now you see that uh, CD up. Well, hold on. VM. Where is the yum? Where's my Telnet? I'm not sure. This right here is how you tell what files was installed by the package of Telnet. You just got user bin Telnet. Let's do a yum search of Telnet. Oh, there's my Telnet server. I just installed the client. And let's find out what packages were installed by the client, the server. So, look, you see that? It gives me my services. And look, and you, you may enable the daemon by an accident need. Now it's installed. So, I should just be able to do this. Hold on, let me get out. Are you there? You're not there? Where'd you go?
Why are you not there? You don't love me? I guess not. Okay. Yeah, it's not there. That's interesting. You must enable it by that. Okay, well, let's do this. Enable tell net D. Uh, this is just tell net. Access denied. You don't like me. Why don't they like me? What happened? X in it D. I wonder if I can tell net to the server. But I can tell net to localhost without starting it. It was just a client that I needed. Um I can connect to port eighty. And you should get that return character and you control uh bracket and then quit. Or you can do this and then control D. So it's reading and getting information from uh, HTTP, which is 480. But I'm concerned as to, well, I mean, I'm not concerned because they're not going to have this on, I don't think they're going to have this on the test. But if you guys are on the test and you're trying to connect to another machine and you need to test to see if the port can connect, uh, one way is to... Um, tell net to that machine on on a port. So here I know port eighty is running. So I can tell net here port eighty. Oh, I'm refused because I think I have firewall running on both ends. It couldn't come back in. Connection refused. You don't like me. I wonder if they got their firewall blocked with Telnet outside of me. Because I should be able to ping on this. Yeah. So, ping's not blocked. But they may have, they may have Telnet blocked. Let's see. Uh, five, nine. Oh, let's see something here. It may not have been started. So here. There we go. It's not blocked. So that's I connected to the port of that machine. Oh, come on. So let's just let's stop that. Let's start the firewall. Let's start the firewall here. All right, and then also too, while we're doing firewall, uh, this is how you get your list of ports. Firewall CMD. That's how I list my ports. Um, I can also list services. So that's how you get ports and services on there. On the next part, they talk about uh, the mail. Uh, they talk about MAP and they talk about mail. Uh, I think you need a mail client. See, this is mail in. Nope, it's not there. So, yum, install mail. Well, let's do it on this machine. No mail available. So, this is so that mail I got going there. I just type mail. I can read what's going on. 
stuff is getting logged for me. Let's quit that. I can actually do mail again. I, you see the U is unread. Uh, telling me about uh, my log files are emailing me. They're not going out. They're just staying on my server. I can hit end for the next one, but I'm at the end of my file. So let's quit. Let's go back and do mail again. Let's read one. And then if I do N, it's going to read two. I only have two messages. So that's my mail, but they're using MUT. So yum, install MUT. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So you don't have, you got no package mail available. So how would you find out where mail is at? How would you do that using your package manager? Uh, oh, hold on. Let me get back over here. Yep. Yeah, I'm search mail. All right, so let's see what do they attribute mail to and what do they say in the book? They look like it's just, let's see, when I install MUT, do I get mail? Well, let me find out for you guys. Which mail? User bin mail. Yum, what provides user bin mail and tell me mail x so do i have mail over here no so in this case i'm gonna do a yum install mail x so if you didn't notice on the on the uh Nah, Mutt is a, a client as a client. It's not short for Thunderbird or nothing. It's a more of a client than anything. So uh they have you going to a pop three. Uh I don't know. Let me see. I don't think it might work. It might not. I don't know. Let's do Mutt Dash. I don't have a pop on here, so it can't connect to that. Um, I'm pretty sure this is not going to work. Sure. Connection, yeah. Because there's no, there's no pop three, no pop on my thingy and I don't think you're gonna have to do configure an email client let's see what they talk about even mail that is delivered uh, month three since GUI email clients have should be trivial for readers the remainder of the session is focused on using command line email so it looks like you're just gonna be doing command line emails, like reading the mail and so forth. So um, I can do a mail, and it shouldn't go anywhere because you don't have nowhere to go. Uh, and then you see your subject. And then I... You just then then it's it's just blank, right? This once you hit enter, it's supposed to be your your message. And then you put E O T is what they have, and I think E O T sends, or you can do a control D. But E O T says, I guess it's the end of the end of the file or something like that. Now let's just try control D. Huh, that don't look like that work. I got a question. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So when you try to do a command and then it says not found and you go to you say we're working with mail right now and then you do a yum search mail. Mm -hmm. And you want to know which, know, how do you know what package it is? You do yeah. yum info on let's grab this. Right? And it's going to give me information about that particular package. And it says, for for mail, this, that, and other. But now you're like, okay, well, what commands are associated with, you know, that gets installed with this? So let's do now a man on yum. Because we're still gathering info, right? Uh, so in here. Uh, You don't need a repo info. You want to know about the packages uh, that are installed with this particular mach machine, <laughs> the, the commands that are installed with. So, I see, let me do this. Yum info. I want to, can I do a dash dash help without it going out? Yeah. So they don't have it here. Let's go over here and look at yum info on package files. Yeah, we're going to list the contents. Uh, repo query. Hmm. Let's try that. Repo query time. Let's try that command just out of curiosity. Ah, oh, guess what? I guess I don't have a repo query. Oh, it come from Yum Utils. Remember that. I marked that down as something to remember. Yum Utils. Because it'll allow you to query the the repo and find out what is installed with that. So let's look up uh, what was the one I just had? This guy. So that would be how I would find out. Here's the one thing to remember. Anytime it's a command, it's under user bin. It's under user bin, user s bin, s bin, or bin. So that's, and I'm going to do this for you. It's got to be in this path. And that path is user bin, user s bin, bin, and s bin. It's, it has to be in those four those four paths. So when you're looking for, uh, say, you want to do mail and the command is not found, it's usually not found in this path. So now when it goes to install, let's do a repo query on mail x. You see that it it put it in slash bin, mm -hmm. so so it falls in that path. It it has to fall in one of those paths. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So remember, you need to install Yum Utils dash Utils, and you need to uh, you can do a repo query and see what it installs for that package. That's going to be helpful on the test. When you're trying to figure out what to install. Because when you do a yum info on mail X, 
it tells you about the um, command and it gives you information about it but you don't know if that's the information you need right you don't know you don't know if that's the the actual package you need to install so the repo query is is a good one yum utils so let's ask you this Lolita, if I want to find out what packages were installed by repo query, I mean by yum dash utils, what I, what would I do? You would do uh, repo query dash. But what? If, but again, that's yum utils. So here's what you here's what you what your answer should be. It should be mm -hmm. rpm dash Q I L C dash dash files by package yum dash utils oh, files not file and see it gives me everything that it installed so it gives me a repo track a repo manage, a repo diff. It gets me some man pages. So if I do a man on repo diff, it's going to tell me, list the difference between two or more YUM repositories. So YUM utils is your friend. Okay. Because you may not have, you may not have repo query installed the point i was making is if you don't have suppose you didn't install yum utils uh, you want to know you want to know what's what suppose you installed it but repo query doesn't tell you what what yum utils installed you want to know what the you want to know what yum utils installed Okay. Yes, it is. It just I just did it. It's right here. RPM dash Q I L C dash S files by package Yum dash utils. And that tells you what 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 the Yum utils package install. And I like this little repo query. That's pretty cool. Because I was able to query and get uh, information about uh, MailX, but from doing a YUM info, let's go back and look at YUM. Let's see if we're missing something on YUM. Um, YUM info packages. Um, let's see if YAM tells us they just the info. It's just the database. See, they come right back, come right back to repo query. They come right back to it. Like it's a little bit more detailed than the YAM. YAM install, YAM install. Yum install what's in that package group install group install they don't really dive off into info about a yum info and that's what I want Yeah, they don't tell you the packages. That we want to know about the packages. And they go right back to repo query. So repo query, yum-utils yum -utils is your friend, and repo query is your is your friend from there. That's what I would stick with. So let's get back to our mail. We did a mail on that, and we should have emailed ourselves, but... That then, oops, control C out of that, control D, control D, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, come on. Well, you'll get back to me, that's fine. Yeah, cute. 
Alright, so now let's do it again. I think I need the person that's on the on here. Alright, test. Here's the subject. I mean here's the message. And then what they say I'm supposed to do next is when you enter the subject and then the text of the message and when done hit control D. Oh, that's what that's what caused it. The EOT was to control D and took me back to my thing thing. So now it says basically if I do a mail on I should oh no. Here we go. If I and then if I do mail, I have something from root, and you can see my message of the day got emailed to me. Everyone see that? So it had to be a user that's on the box. Do I need to go over that one more time for clarity? Are you guys okay with that? Okay. Okay. And the next one is about reading the file, which we just did. I showed you e-links. Uh, so let's uh, let's do a repo query. We need to get used to using that command on e-links. Uh, e links just shows us the. Oh, did Lolita fall off? Are you gone? No? No, I'm here. Okay. So, e links gives me repo query. What did I do, what did I do wrong on my repo qu qu query here? I didn't do That's a dash, I, a dash L. Okay. So, you see, again, user bin, user has been something, something. So, let's do an e-links on um, a Google on cloud.google.com. Uh, is it not installed? Do I not have e-links installed? And let's query. And grab for e-links. It's not installed, but it's the repo query uh, command went and queried the repo and told me what files would be installed from that package. You see that it queried the repo and told you what's going to be in it. So that's that repo query is a useful command. Trust me, I've never played with it before until tonight. You see how slow this is. That I would die. And then, then the next one is FT, LFTP. Um, and then let's while this is going on, I'll 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 finish all that off. But let's answer these questions real quick. Uh, what what I'm on page one hundred eight. What SSH command switch enables access to the to remote GUI utils? And it's something I went over to. Anybody? You know the dash, dash capital X. Capital X. That is correct. Uh, what uh, command initiates a secure copy of the file etc host from the server from me from the system server one example com to slash temp? And I did that. I did an example of SCP. So remember how that works? So remember SCP is, and this is something you should remember with your commands. 
it's always a command your options source destination so the source in this case is we want we want we want to we want to copy uh, stuff from system server one example.com and it will be colon so it would look like this it would look like SCP uh, server one dot example dot com the folder that we're getting the file that we're getting is host and then we're slash putting that in temp that's what we're doing that's what that command will look like and then it says what command would you use to see if the server is running on port 25 so you guys got how many commands to tell that but really what they're looking for is telnet they want you to telnet to that IP address on port 25 and says what command can be used to verify active and available services on a remote server with the IP address which what what do you think that is I'll let you guys answer that oh in map yeah that's the key word remote Oh. See if it's active and and available. Verify is active and available, because Nmap would tell you that. That's chapter one. Chapter two is all about. Uh, I mean, chapter two. Chapter three is all about stuff we've done, such as um, cat. Uh, we can do some redirects real quick. I echo the path so you can see a path. We did a CD. We've done touch. We've done copy. We've done move. Uh, we made directories. We went over uh, a remove of a file versus remove of a directory. Let's do an alien. Let's do an alias. Let's do find and locate. I can run through these real quick. I know it's after time, but give me 10 minutes. I will. I would emphasize and stress uh, page 136 uh, with uh, said and awk and WC. Basically, WC is this. Say, um, I'm in L. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do an LS on temp. I'm gonna pipe that over to WC. It's giving me a, a word count, but I want to do that word count by line. It just gives me a total of what that is for my temp. I could do for for ETC. It's going to give me a word count, but by line, meaning I have 218 things in that in in that listing. Um, that's what that is. They have different. Uh, so W help W C. Okay. Info WC. And they talk about bytes and words and length. Most people use the dash L. And I'm freezing. I don't know where my terminal went. I'm frozen. There we go. So you can see by line, uh, you can go by words, print only the word count, print the characters. Most people are using the dash L for that. Set an awk. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna make up something for that. I want you guys really to get in that. We've played with VI. Um... We can play with it some more. Uh, they talk, talk about man pages in here, which we've done. We did not go over the command line tools of trace route and ping. We haven't done that. Um, let's, let's, uh, I'm gonna probably include this in Saturday's class. The stuff, that's my goal is to include what we don't cover today. I throw it in Saturday's class. So we have, you know, all of that.
But from here, can anybody tell me what the difference is here when I do this? What what am I doing when I do this? What does that do? Don't answer all at one time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, erase it to the file. Where's the file so go? It, it, it's um, in the temp directory, and the file is called mytest.txt. All right. So let's see if that's true. It is. So what does this do? No such file or directory. It didn't like me. All right. What was supposed to happen was it was supposed to put whatever contents was in that file into this file. It doesn't like that. So I think mm -hmm. I have to have. Let's do this. It's supposed to be. Oh, hold on. Let me do this. Let's see if it works this way. Nah, it doesn't like it. It doesn't like the fact that I was trying to, I'm trying to, what, what basically is supposed to happen is you're supposed to be able to redirect your output from Take your output of this file of my test.txt and dump it into me.txt. And that's what they're okay. trying to show you on this redirect here. They're okay. trying to show you a redirection. That didn't work for me. Let's find out why this redirect didn't work. Let's let's find out. Uh, less than sign, do, 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 Linux. Let's see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Did I miss him? No, no. Yeah, they don't have it on here. Let's go. That should have worked. Why didn't you work? I'm going to find out why you didn't work. I'm going to make uh, a command list up, which was what I was supposed to do this weekend, but I was busy doing installs. Let's see here. Where's my little dingy? Yeah, you can't do nothing with that. You're supposed to, it's supposed to be a command. Let's see, can't me that text. Yeah, it doesn't like that. Oh, it like that though. Hmm. Nothing. So let's see this. I wonder why it 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 liked that. So in this file, there's.
there's that and it liked this But there's nothing in me.txt. Yeah, nothing in there. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to get it to store whatever was in. I mean, the only other way to do that, but I wanted to do the redirect the other way. It says you can redirect the streams to or from for example if you have a program named database and a and a data file the contents of that data file can be sent to a database program which is true you can I mean I guess you can run I guess it has to be a program uh, mm. let me th what's a program that I can I see uh, Can I do this? Um, nah, it don't like that. It has to be a dump. Yeah. So let's go back. Let's, uh, Let's not give it a path. Let's do this. Nothing. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like cat. So I think I think this has to be done on a action. On the left hand side, the left hand side has to be some type of action. So let me try that one more time with the tail. Well, let's get rid of that. And let's. Can I do this? Yeah, it doesn't like cat. Mm. And it doesn't. And it, I don't think it like echo. Yeah, it doesn't like when I'm giving it a command to do something else. It doesn't know what to do with that. <laughs> oh, let's mark that one on page 121. I'm going to mark that one. And we have to come up with some examples. And then the rest of this, uh, we know what the redirect does. We've seen D message gives you system files. That's the system files. You can also look at um, LSPCI, what sits on a PCI bus. You can also look and see what sits on a USB bus. LS USB, not installed, yum, search, LS USB. Uh, no match found. How about USB? It may be, it's probably USB utils. <laughs> yeah, I'm install USB utils. I'm going with that. It's always some kind of utility like yum utils. Mm -hmm. It's usually your stuff that you end up installing LS USB. There you go. So it's that one. And you see my keyboard in my mouse. We, uh, We've we, the exam. This watch that's important. Let's uh let's let's aim. Let's talk about this uh in class on Saturday. So one twenty one and one twenty two. Mark those. Let's go over some standard error input output dev no. Those are basic commands you need to know. Anything in here that says watch, we need to know it. it says even though it should be trivial for most users a part of I'm on page 119 a part of the REC is, is to access a shell from the prompt and know how to set up 
access to different shell prompts. Oh, so they're talking about all virtual terminals, all F1, all F2. I'm going to set you up a box so you got, but you know what? Check with uh, Linux Academy, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to get you different, a different box. Let me see something here. See. Yeah, I'm going to do um, Linux. Um, are we having study tomorrow or Saturday? Saturday. You okay. want, I got to drive tomorrow, so I will say you want to study tomorrow. Oh. I got to drive tomorrow. I, I want to see something. I want to see if I can. Let me see. Uh, Control Alt F1. Yeah, it ain't let me do that. <laughs> I'm on my terminal to see if I can do uh, a Control Alt F1. No, it didn't let me do it. It's not letting me do that on this box. That's what I was trying to figure out. And then they talk about the different shells, which I've talked about before. And I talked about that in the thing, the born, the K mm -hmm. shell, the T shell, the Z shell. On the exam, that's 119. Uh, GUI interfaces. Uh, GUI, GUI shell interfaces. They're talking about GNOME. What's the difference between an admin and a not an admin? Let's uh, verify that. You see that that pound sign right there? Yeah, it's the pound. And, let, I read it in a dollar sign difference. Yeah, yeah and then uh, that's how you know. But be careful because. I think the the seashell has a pound sign too, if it's that. So uh, you can always like uh, um, say who am I, so you know who you are at all times. Because uh, the seashell uh, can be confusing as well. And then, how do I find out what current directory am I? I'm in. Pwd. Okay. How do I how do I get back to my home directory? Um, you show the CD space that little tickly thing tilde tilde yeah and uh is it a forward slash or back? You just do tilde that takes oh, okay. you home. Okay, tilde tilde takes you home. Uh, we I did an echo path to show you what directory I mean what. It's in your path in terms of what commands you're able to run. Uh, you can always update that. So you can update that by doing an ETC profile. Um, I usually stick it, for me, I stick it right here. So if I want to add a path, I just, I just do like a... I could do this. I could do, um, say, I want to update Java. I do Java. Really, you should do it Java underscore home equal to wherever Java is. And then uh, once you do that, I don't know if they stick that. They should. I, I don't see them going to different uh, shells. Um, say, test uh, Java. Right, and then here you do path equal to because you want to append to path colon Java underscore home, and then you want the bin directory. That's your normal setup of how you do your path. Uh, that's how you add to your path, and then you because I have path. Here, I don't have to export it again. This is going to get exported for me. This is me setting my path. And I, I I may have to have single quotes, but I don't think so. I don't think I have to have single quotes. And then go from there. Let's see. And then if I do source, ETC profile. And then if I do echo dollar sign path. You'll see, oh yeah, see I need to I need to source that. Let's go back. 
let's go back. I forgot something. This guy. Dollar sign. It's an environment variable. So now I want to do echo path. Oh, you didn't like me? Why? Let's go back. Why didn't you like me? I wonder do I need to do this? I didn't, never had to do that before. Let's find out. Keep coming up Java home. Hmm. It should have exported that. It should have came up Java home equal to test Java. This is now a... Oh, uh, you know what? This guy. No? That's right. I don't... I know I don't need that. I know I don't need that. I know I need slash bin. Hmm. Let's see some. I wonder if that's causing it to be escaped. Sorry. Yeah. It's supposed to be... It's supposed to be Java underscore home. is supposed to be the test... Uh... Test Java. This should have showed up as test Java. But it didn't. Oh, yeah. This is okay. Java home. Yeah. It should have showed up as just test Java. Oops. Sorry. And the path should have been uh, appended. I don't know why it's doing that. I've never seen that before. Let's look at that. Yeah. So exporting it, like, I don't know why it's doing that. I can look that up real quick. Export path. Uh, do do Yeah. You just export path. You just add what you want. And it should be there. And if you do environment variables, um, Linux. Print V, print V, da 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 da. It's not what I want. That's born. You know, yeah. See, export. Do I need to do an export? Let's find out. I don't think I had to do that. I've never done that before. Yeah, I had to look at that as to why it's doing that. That's totally odd. I've never had to do that before. So we'll work on that. It's still there. So it's, I just I messed up my path, but I'll fix it. I'll remove it. So echo. Um, dollar sign. Java home. See, it says it's to test Java. So now we want to remove that from the path. So how do we remove that from the path? I'll fix that. I'll give you that command too. And then you touch the file before you copy. Lolita, I know you moved the file. Yeah. And you removed the file. I yes. I talked I talked I talked earlier in the week about uh, the difference between REM 
Let's see, let's do let's go to temp. Let's make a directory. Uh hello. And then if you do remove hello, it won't work because it's a directory. Mm. Let's do a dash R. And then now it'll remove it. If you want to let's make a directory again. You can do a dash RF to force it without asking you. That's the force. Let's do that again. And I can do uh, RF dash V. Oh, look, doesn't like it. So, yeah, let's do, let's go here. Okay. <laughs> Interactive. V should have worked because it should have been for verbose. I don't know why it doesn't like verbose on that. I wonder if I had to flash a dash V like that. Yeah, it didn't do anything. But it does like the dash V. It just didn't do anything. Let's uh, make a directory again. And then let's take off the F. And you can see again. It gives me a little bit more detail. And then the ones about... Uh, let's see. I said uh, I want to make a directory slash hello slash y. No such file or directory. So if I pass the dash p option, it's going to make that for me. So if I cd up to slash... I'll see hello. And then I'll see why. You see that? Yep. Why didn't it um Because do I don't had I didn't have I don't I didn't I didn't have that in the first place. I didn't have hello in the first place. The dash P uh Oh it made both. Well yeah, it may it may it forced me it forced it to make the first directory and then the subsequent directories. Like it'll mm -hmm. like make the make uh, make the first directory, but if you have to make mm -hmm. something afterwards that's not already that's not even there, you have to pass the dash P option. So if oh, I do man or make der uh see the the parents no no mm -hmm. No error if existing. Make parent directories as needed. So let's do this. Remove dash RF. Make uh hello. Uh, what's it called? Hello. Yes. So hello is gone. So let's clear. If I did a make der dash p. Hello, why are you here? Each one of these are parents. Hello is the parent to why, why is the parent to all of these, and they're not there already. So it's going to make every last one of those. Okay. Oops, why? See? It made all of those. You got that one? Yep. All right, and then you can make links. So there's a difference between a, a, a hard link and a soft link. So let me go to temp. So uh, I want to make a soft link to my etc directory. So. If I do ln dash s, uh, I want to call this uh, to source. The source will be slash etc, and the destination is here. Uh, I'm gonna call it to etc. And if I do a ls, you see that link right there uh, to etc. Right here. Okay. That's a soft link. So if I cd to etc, I am now in my etc directory. Now, what you don't want to do is make a hard link. I'm going to show you. So, all. When you, so when you make a soft link, you're saying 
um, your source and then what you want to call the link, right? Every, every command that you run is always a source and destination. Source first, destination. That's the format of the commands. Okay. So the difference between a soft link and a hard link. A soft link uh, creates a new inode to that location. In other words, I create a new I create I create a new location uh, on uh, a new location on the disk to point to that new lo to that old location that I want to go to. If you make a hard link, if you just do ln, let's do this, uh, make a directory and call it uh, tune day. And then do a ln, dash, not dash s, ln uh, source. And then destination is uh, uh, tune day two. Uh, it won't let me hard link directories. I can only hard link files. Okay. So let's touch Tune Day. And then let's do a hard link. Ah, uh, you don't like me? Oh, hold on. Where does it get that from? I did touch source. Destination. Is that? I don't have a file there in there. Oh, it is. Clear. Touch. I did touch on Tune. Okay, there we go. Now it looks like. Now it's right. All right. Let me clear it. Let me blow this up for you. And I'm going to do the dash I to give you the I nodes. You see these I nodes. Oops. The I nodes are the same. You see that? Mm. They're the same. I'm going to show you a difference. So uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to touch hello. And then I'm going to ln dash s hello and hello too. And then let's grab for that. And let me see if this will work. I think I need to do it another way. Yeah. It's going to filter that. So anyway, tune day and then hello. You see that the these I know links are different. Mm -hmm. So what a hard link does, it hard links the two together. In other words, if I delete tune day two, I delete tune day. In this case, if I delete hello two, hello stays there. So let's remove uh, Tune Day 2. And then let's do, let's go back and grab LS minus Tune Day. Uh, it stayed there. What was it? Hard link? Huh. It stayed there. That's interesting. It's supposed to delete it. Yeah. It's supposed to delete it. But be careful when I tell you it will delete the, the stuff in the directory. Believe me, it will. So, you know, <laughs> you know, I take my word for it on this one. But yeah, it made the I know it's the same. It's a hard link to it. Let me see something. Uh, let's go back to Tune Day 2. And let's remove Tune Day. And let's see if we still have it. It's still there. It's a hard link. It's interesting that it's still there. It's supposed to delete. It's supposed to delete both of them. I double checked out. 
hard links. But anytime you do anything, do soft links. Okay. But hard links, again, creates the same I know. Soft links creates a different I know. And we went over page 129 except for your aliases that are found by default. So you can create an alias um, in your uh, bash rc file. That's what this is. So when I do a rm, I get that. So I can create a alias. And call it a uh, host. Uh, let's call it HU. HN. And let's uh, do host name. All right. And then you source. Source runs this file. This as a sourcing my uh, direct my environment setting up my environment for me so when I do HN you see it gave me the host name mm -hmm. yeah. so those are just shortcuts that you can create in your dot bash RC file and file searches I want to spend some time on that You've seen me do cat, less, more, head, and tail. Uh, you've seen me do this a thousand times. Tail dash F on a var log. This creates me an, on, an, an ongoing loop to read that file. Uh, sort dash, if I do a ls on etc, sort. As you can see, it puts in an alphabetical order. You see that? Yeah. That's what sort does. And once we should spend time going over our grip on page 134. I'm going to send out some stuff on that. Um, find in the book, they tell you to do this. This is the one you that's going to save you t time on the test. Yum, install, M, locate. Because this, you can use locate to find stuff versus find, going through and searching the file system. So page 136 said an off. I want to go over that with you guys in detail. We've already been over Vim. Uh, so here I can do a locate of time. It's going to go through the file system and find it for me because I just updated the pretty much the, the, the links, the database links to find out what I needed to know. You've gone over info and P info and the only thing that's left to do in chapter three is networking. So you guys can read through that and we're going to go through that on Saturday. Uh, and I would, I would stress the, um, Linux Academy mm -hmm. and go, going through as much as you can of, uh, use essential tools. Cause that's, I mean, locate and find, we just went through that, how to set permissions, Hard link, soft links, how to copy, how to move, how to edit files, how to use tar, how to switch to multi-user, how to access a system, SSH, how to use grep, input, redirect. Everything we just went through is this first chapter. And then they got exercises. So I, would, I would run through that. And then they hop into doing networking in chapter, the end of chapter 3, chapter 3.05. They do networking. Um, I think that's in Let's see. Uh 
starter and start network service. It's somewhere in here, but I'm going to I'm I'm going to dig down and find out exactly where it's at, and I give you that, and that will take care of all of chapter one, two, and three, besides the kickstarts. And the next chapter, they start talking about firewalls and SSH keys and basic file permissions. So that's the get faculty stuff they talk about, which in this class, if we're keeping up with what they're doing, I will hop down to manage security. No, nah, not right now. We'll need to worry about kickstarts right now. That's what I was saying. Skip that part and... Let's roll with these SE Linux commands of uh, chapter four. So next all next week, uh see this Saturday we're gonna finish off chapter three. Chapter four I'm gonna do on all week. I'm gonna put inside of the instant message box all week. I mean in Slack all week SE Linux stuff. I'm gonna spend a whole week on that. So that's gonna be all week in Slack, I'm going to be posting stuff. And then I'm going to give you guys this, this homework to try. And when that Thursday, we'll be doing nothing but XE Linux. And then Saturday, uh, I'll just, we'll go over a little more XE Linux. But come... Uh, because we got nine chapters to go through. Um, chapter five is the boot process. We can we can get through that really really quickly. That's not hard. Chapter six is uh, partitions and LVM. We need to spend some time on that. I may skip chapter six and go chapter five, chapter seven for package management. Until we can set up a lab. I have to read through chapter 6. For you guys. But chapter 7 and chapter 8. Are. Things we've gone over. So. I think we're going to probably do something like. 5, 7 and 8. And I want to spend some time in chapter 6. Let's spend some time in chapter six. Let's spend some time in understanding partitions, how to partition your machines, and so forth. And I think this is where Linux Academy is going to take care of that. Yeah, next week is all about SE Linux. Okay. Yeah. And you can read about the boot process. It's not that hard. So uh, let's go. Let's finish off chapter three. I think we covered everything in chapter one, two, and three, uh, except for the stuff I got highlighted, which is, and you can correct me on this, uh, the export, the hard links. Um, what else? Exports, the, hard links, um, the redirect. Redirect. Um, We went over and make the you seen head and tail, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we need to go page one thirty four. With uh grip. Doing a diff on a file. Understanding how diff works, that's gonna be something in page one thirty six. One thirty four through one thirty six. And then we need to do oh. in 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 M N M L M N M C L I. But that's pay that's your networking three point oh five. So for a recap, all of all of this, 
understand, use essential tools. And I'll put together the tutorials for uh, the stuff that I think we need to focus on out of these chapters, I mean, out of these first three chapters, which is page 121, 134 through 136, section point 305, and export hard links and redirects. Is that pretty much it? Yeah. All right. And then, like I say, the the what they cover, what I don't cover, the Linux Academy covers. Okay. So, did anybody have any questions on what we went through tonight? Like, other than the stuff that I said we need to go over? No, pretty good. Was it pretty straightforward? Yes. All right. So, what I would, what I want to do is, um, most definitely, we're going to pick up with four, which is SE Linux. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys that link now, which is uh, IPA, no, SE Linux, Fedora. Um, this guy. It is very detailed. Like, very detailed. Like, it goes through everything. I mean, as you can see, it has everything in it, like from, and it breaks it out by command, like how do you do it for rsync, how do you do it for DHCP, how do you do it for Samba, how do you change the contents, what, it gives examples, like, it's very detailed, and I prefer this one over, uh, what they have it read. <laughs> So they break down like here the role, the type, and the level, and that's what I talked about. The role, the type, the leader. You got this down. Like you shouldn't miss this on the yes. test. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't miss this on the test. All right, and remember I talk about PS minus EZ, uh, ID minus Z. Everything is with the Z, the capital Z. If you're ever wondering, but I'm gonna give you guys. Uh, this as a link. So keep this with you whenever you can. And I'll put that on my little document as well for SE Linux. And that's it. We Sorry we went to 10. I think you needed it. So we can have some clarity about what we were doing, where we were going. Chapter yeah, 4. Cool. Chapter 4 is Firewalls and SE Linux. Uh, we'll talk about some other stuff like masking IP tables so it doesn't start. You want to use that because you want to use Firewall D because we've been teaching Firewall D. And we're ready to rock. So we're we're after after next Saturday we are halfway there, more than halfway actually, because we we we're, we're probably I'm probably gonna combine some stuff out of chapter other chapters, such as uh, when we do SE Linux. Um, so you get Enforce. That's enforcing. So when when I do uh, get se bull dash a, we'll probably combine some stuff like uh, httpd. Oh, crap, sorry. I'll com probably combine some stuff with uh, httpd and se Linux that will cover some other stuff in other chapters, but uh. I think you guys are going to be really, really 
surprised when we get through this that you know more than what you think you do. Because I've covered a lot of this in class. How you feeling? Sure hope so. <laughs> Ye of little faith. I know. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Ye of little faith. I mean, but no, like, so if you guys... Um, if you feeling like we say it work froggy, uh, go through, go through the commands. Like in chapter three, they say, what's the single command that creates ABC? I'm on page 170. ABC, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L in series of directories. What command would that be? You want to, you want to make a directory and you want to make these parent directories. Oh, um, uh, mkdir-p. Yeah. It says, and what symbol represents the home of the directory of the current user? And I think what, uh, and I think that what they're trying to say is uh, whether you're at uh, dollars, uh, dollar sign or till, like, oh, they're trying to say, how do you get there? Use the tilde. Oh. That was confusing. You should say, how do I get to the home directory? It says, what command lists the last 10 lines of our log messages? Yeah, so you have to know the difference between head and tail. Head is the beginning, tail is the end. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so, you can, so you do a tail dash uh, in 10. Tail dash in 10. So you do tail... Mm -hmm. Dash in ten var log messages. They give you the last ten lines. It says what command returns the lines with the term with the term Linux from var log messages from var, from var log D message. What command returns? Are they trying to say D message? Oh, they're trying to they're trying to cat. Varlog D message and grep Linux. That was not intuitive. That wasn't a very good question. And, they're not, and your questions are not going to be multiple choice, by the way. You're going to do a lab. Uh, <laughs> what command searches the database of the man pages for manual for the manual references? Remember this? Man dash K. Oh, I didn't look the K. Yes. Okay. Yes, the man dash K searches the uh, searches the um thing, and then look, they got a man dash capital K. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, Control D, maybe. So cute, yeah. Control C, sure. So man dash capital K. Let's go back. Search for all text in all pages. So that's why I was getting that. So it looks for everything. It, in all pages. Okay. So you just do better by doing a man dash k, lowercase, and it gives you where that's where it's at. Help files for that, and then the rest is networking stuff. Oh, it says if there are man pages for the hypothetical A B C D. A, B, C, D, E command and file in sections 5 and 8. Type in the command for the man to call up the man, patient, man pages for section 5. And what they're talking about here, like I want to call up the man pages for section 1 of this. I just do mm -hmm. man 1 L password. Mm -hmm. So you put the 1 in front. So that answer on page 171 
Mm-hmm. It's on page eight. Mm-hmm. I mean, not page eight. Page 172, number eight. So they want you to be able to say man dash five password. If you if that was the fifth man page you wanted to look at. In this case, uh, I'm lo- I'm looking at password, and I want to look at uh, pass password history helper, but because it contains password, I do man eight uh, pw history underscore helper, and if I look for password in here. See, it searched the entire, the man dash case searched the entire database, found where password existed, and it says, well, choose from this. Mm. And so I went with the eight. And that's it. Thank you. Does it make, does all this make sense? Yes, it does. You just have to practice. I yeah. know I gotta practice. Yeah. So I what I'm I'm so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and start doing the search now so I don't have to do this tomorrow and not, I I didn't I lose time and then Saturday comes and I don't have nothing for you. So let me look up this stuff that I got written down. Take a quick break and then I'll post all of this into um Slack so you can read through it and then I'll go over it again for reiteration. Okay. Um the stuff for this study group, you're gonna post it in the study group or general? In the study group. In the study group. Okay. Yeah, it's not for everybody. Okay. They didn't pay no money. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Oh, um, can you send me the link? The when I go to PayPal, what what do I do? You know who to ask, right? Oh, not you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's women at Women in Linux. Okay, all right. Yeah. I, but I don't know what the link is. Hey, hey, you talk to me. <laughs> I'm just, a, I'm just a long, I'm just a poor old teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for teaching. No problem, man. Thank you. All right, bye. You guys have a good night.